So you have had an email telling you to log in and reset your password. So you will sign in with your um, password, your usual email address, and the password you picked when you logged in for the first time. And it looks like this the first time you log in. Um, depending, it may look like this. Um, sometimes the sidebar is open. Generally speaking, I keep the sidebar shut. This shows recent items, and we'll be adding custom links to this over time. But this usually I keep shut because it's um, more useful from the perspective of um, screen real estate. So close the sidebar because it's more you get more screen real estate the other thing i also generally do is i hide the feed because again that uses up screen real estate as well so the first place you would go would be to go to the leads tab you can see the tabs for different elements of salesforce across the top they're pretty straightforward to understand uh, leads are sales leads people you've maybe not dealt with before um, new potential pieces of business, accounts are existing customers and accounts that we already have relationships with or possibly prospects that you're already working with and working with opportunities, opportunities relatively straightforwardly, uh, pretty much what they say, business opportunities, you've got beyond the lead stage, you've qualified the fact that there is a, a business opportunity there, opportunities can be with existing customers obviously or with new prospects. Contacts are individuals. Uh, contacts are associated with accounts. They can also be associated with opportunities, orders, and many other elements. And we also have an orders tab as well. Uh, I won't go through that at this stage. I'm going to focus really up upon how we uh, use leads. So click on the leads tab for the first time. Um, what you'll find is that you've got a few choices here. You've got all open leads, my open leads, all today's leads, my unread leads, and recently viewed leads. Now, you would generally go to my open leads. I'll show you, I'll go there anyway. We won't find any leads on this user because this is a test user. No leads have been created for this user. So just to demonstrate the, the way to navigate, I'm just gonna go back to another view, um, all open leads, which will show everybody's leads. Um, so this gives you a view of all, all the leads. You can see that we've got 1,500 at the bottom here. Um, we can sort them by uh, we can sort them by name, company name, phone number. We can even sort by email. If we click on uh, if we click on the top of a column, it will resort. So I've resorted it by lead status. We can sort it by industry, by state or province. These fields here operate business, country. Um, they're obviously to do with uh, what most of this information was brought in from the GoPro registration process because a lot of these leads came from the GoPro site. So I'm going to sort back. I'm going to sort back to name. Okay, so this is the lead list. You can see that some of these leads have clearly got more information than others. Most of the ones that have got lots of info in are the ones that have been imported from the via the GoPro registration process. So I'll just pick one of these at random. GoPro Web means it's been imported from the GoPro Salesforce, which this is GoPro shows GoPro Web. If it's GoPro Web, it means that this lead has come in via GoPro's uh, portal, which then populates their Salesforce, and we then update our Salesforce from theirs. Uh, and you can see that it includes, we've got the GoPro lead capture information down here, uh, shows um, in, their industry, where they operate, whether they're into live broadcasting, number of events they've got, and what their business is, and so on, um, and whether and they've given us an indication of forecast in here as well. So, our lead qualification process is is in here. So we've got our status, and we can pick one of the statuses when we contacted them. We should mark it as contacted. Um, when we when it's if if you go through the process and you realise that there's no business there, if, if you want to move it to dead. You actually have to uh, update one of these, at least one of these tick boxes, and give a reason. So if they reject it on price, you know, give an indication of what price level will be effect, uh, would be appropriate. If they reject it on the basis of frequency, 
uh, give an indication of what frequency ranges they were looking for and obviously if they reject it on the basis of they'd want to use it with another camera um, just make some notes about that as well uh, if they're just kind of kicking the tires and fact finding uh, you can tick that box here and if there's another rejection tick that one and just make a note of it in the reason box you'll find that actually if you change it to dead uh, and you don't update the reason box um, it won't allow you, don't tick one of these boxes and upload the reason box it won't allow you to save the um, won't allow you to save the record so you can see that what I've done is we've I've clicked on that lead status and um, once we've changed it we hit save there I'm not going to save it I'm just going to go back to uh, put it back to where it was before in fact I cancel so we haven't saved it um, there are two ways of actually editing a record uh, I've just kind of showed you one of them which is by just clicking in a particular field you can update that field you can actually update more than one field um, so you know if you want to change the change the telephone number add other information you can do that and you can do more than you can do it um, you can do more than one at a time um, and then what you have to do is you have to hit save before you um, before you actually commit that information, and it will save all three or two or three or whatever number of information you sh you've saved. I'm not going to save this. I'm just going to hit cancel because I don't want to actually mess around with this record. If I scroll down a little bit, you can also see where well, there's a little help box. It does actually tell you what the meaning of each one of these things is. So you can actually scroll over the help box to tell you what you should be populating in a particular place. In this GoPro lead capture piece it tells, shows you the question that's asked, actually asked on the GoPro website so you can see what this is what this is in answer to. You can also see that we've got the address information if we've got a complete address information it'll even show you a little map from Google Maps um, and if we scroll further down we've got, you can see open activities you can see that this guy has already had an email for, from us as part of our campaign and you can see which campaign he was in so this isn't of a specific interest to you but you can go and have a look at what that email is so these in this activity history this area here is a place where you can record information about interactions that you have with the customer so if you want to if you took a call from the customer or you made a call to the customer you can log that information in here you can record the the, the outcomes of that you can in addition to logging calls you can also send emails if you click on the send an email uh, you can actually choose whether to send text only emails you can basically or you can switch to HTML you can you can select templates as well uh, I won't go through the detail of templates at this point but you, if you select templates you can see what's available it'll populate uh, it'll populate this uh, field down here and then you can uh, actually update that and send it you can also attach files to any to emails so you can attach files locally or you can attach them from your computer. So you can attach them from the computer. You can you can hold documents on Salesforce, or you can actually get um, shared documents as well that are already there. So most of the, all the data sheets and stuff are already available. So if you want to send the data sheets, you can send them with, from, directly from within uh, within Salesforce in, the, in an email. Quick discussion about opportunities. So in this particular case. Um, Let's just say we've been through the process with this guy and we decide that he want, he, there's a potential opportunity here. So this is the point at which we use the convert button. And what this will do is it will create a new account if the, if the account doesn't exist. Um, if it, it will search in our accounts list and I have actually got a, what I think is a complete list of the accounts from the AX system. So if it finds an existing account it will find, it will search for it um, and try and match it up. So it will give you the option of create a new account, or you may have add to an existing account. So if you've got I don't know, for example, an opportunity with ABC, you can add it to the existing ABC account. Um, so what will happen is that the contact will be created associated with either the new account or an existing account. You can set up some task information regarding this as well. I'm not really going to do this conversion now, but basically what happens is it takes one piece of information, the lead, and converts it into three. If it's a new account, it will create an account, a contact, and an opportunity. Uh, and you should give the opportunity a name. It, by default, it will put the account name in here. Um, so give the opportunity a name and um, hit convert and then you'll have 
you can work on the opportunity. I'm not going to go through details of opportunity at the moment. I'll do that in a separate video. So that's leads. One more thing. I didn't discuss the edit mode for um, records. I showed you how to add stuff to a record by clicking in a field and then updating it and then hitting save. But there's also an alternative mechanism and this applies to any record on Salesforce. What you'll find is that all the records on Salesforce look very similar, have the same kinds of fields in them. So you can also edit a record. If you edit a record, puts it into what they call edit mode, basically you've got all of the fields open to you to edit in one go. So this is particularly useful if you want to update a load of information at one time. If you just want to edit odd fields here and there, it's easier to do what they call inline editing.